What's up, everybody? Welcome to an extra special extra mile all about as dust falls. We're going to go in depth with the game and just talk about our thoughts about it and give you our full review. Joining me today, we've got Captain Cannon himself, Court Lawn. Court, how are you doing this evening? Salutations. And we also got the pants man himself, Sean Capri. How's it going, John? Filling up my car with regular gas is priced like premium gas. <laughs> okay, and as for me, I'm Ryan Turfer, the weatherman on the moose, and today is a very exciting day, folks, so tomorrow, from the day that you're listening to this or watching right now on youtube.com slash carpoolgaming, um, as Dust Falls launches into Game Pass, but thanks to our friends over at Xbox Canada, we got a chance to play the game a little bit early to give you our full thoughts on the game, but before we get into our thoughts about the game, don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then ding, 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 ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we go live or whenever we put up new videos, or if you want more from us, you can uh, head over to podcast feeds for the xbox drive on your podcast for service of choice or you can head out over to patreon.com slash carpool gaming throw a little tip in the old tip jar and out comes content so going into this review we're going to keep this spoiler free so if you didn't want to know anything about this game going into it we're going to we're going to do like a quick story synopsis like setting up the story for you but beyond that there's going to be no spoilers, so you don't have to worry about spoilers with this review. But if you are interested in story spoilers, once you finish the game, we will have a spoiler cast for the game going up tomorrow uh, all about the game. So you can check that out on this podcast feed or right here on YouTube as well. Um, but then we're going to get into things here. So, uh, Court, I'm going to start with you. What did you think? I, I just want your surface level thoughts on as Death Falls. What, what did you think about this game? Well, going into it, the art direction, I didn't think I was going to like the, the cell shading, the um, almost like um, it's I, I almost explain it as claymation, how it like moves and like moves awkwardly. Mm -hmm. um, and at first it was it was taking some getting used to. But then I really started seeing that the brilliance of it for the, the setting, which is Arizona and and how much it 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 fit if that makes any sense, because I, I really didn't think it was going to. And I really thought that was going to be an issue that was going to bother me the whole time playing it. And it, it was one of the things that I, I truly um, enjoyed about the game. And I really found the art direction uh, great. It was almost like watching a movie, but reading a comic at the exact same time. Yeah, um, it, like almost like a, a gra like a um, an animated novel or something like that, because we've seen stuff like that, because I remember there was a collector's edition for um, I think it was like Gears 3 or Gears 2 that came with a motion comic of, of Gears and it had like it, it was animated in a similar style where it was almost like stop motion um, where like whenever a character to simulate characters movement, you would see them kind of flicker in between, you know, different areas as they, they to simulate the act of running, for example. So. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Sean, what did you think about this game? Just surface level thoughts. Yeah, man. I mean, I think it's important to kind of talk about where we were coming into the game and then the journey that we go on. It's not an incredibly long game. This I think you beat it in like six hours or something like that. I was a little longer than that. Um, I, I agree. The art style like actually uh, was something that caught me instantly when we saw this um, revealed a few months ago. And I went on a journey on this game. At the, at the very beginning, I thought, I was starting to stack up reasons why I didn't like it. I thought maybe some of the performances were a little over the top. I thought maybe some of the scenarios were a little cliche. I thought some of the relationships were things we've seen before. But the more agency I found myself getting in this game and the more the butterfly effect kind of came into prominence into it, I found myself wanting to play it again and again and going back and seeing what else I could do. I've been looking forward to this conversation and then our spoiler cast as well, because I'm so thrilled to find out what you guys did. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different paths that can be taken in this game. And I feel like that's probably its biggest strengths. There's a lot of middling elements of it, but I think that the um, the branching paths and f uh, the the impact of your decisions is really what people are going to be signing up for on this one. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this comes from the pedigree of the studio in particular, as far as the choices and whatnot, because Interior Night is the developer of this game. This is their very first game, but they're because they're a brand new studio, but they're made up of industry vets who worked at Quantic Dream and 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 Sony specifically. And they worked on games like 
heavy rain and Detroit become human, which again, like I knew at the, from the first time we, we saw this, I was like, what is this weird looking game with this, you know, interesting looking art style. But then when we heard right after its initial reveal trailer that this was being de- developed by, you know, former Quantic Dream developers, I got instantly much more Same. excited for mm-hmm. this game because I, I really loved those games. Like I love Detroit Be- Become Human, for example. That was one of my favorite games in the year it was released in. So um, it, you could definitely tell like, this development style really comes from a place of, of the developers who worked on those games and the storytelling because um, yeah. the, it's it, the, the subject matter, um, both heavy rain and, and, and Detroit behind human, like they have subject matter. That's not just like, Hey, you know, bad guy does this, you do this. They, there is, there is meaning to what they, they're the storytelling. And there's, it's like, it's like a spider web there. There all those different branches, but at the same time, it's this, this thing is accumulating to come and get its prey almost to, to get you to where you need to go. And it it's 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 rather crazy because I know through it, this is not a spoiler. I'm not giving anything away. I, when I messaged Sean at one point and he told me what he did and I was like, oh, my God, like totally in a totally different direction. And, and, and <laughs> it's a kind like, way to say it. <laughs> no, well, a totally different direction. But um, it's and, and I do love when they tell you about your different play styles throughout the game. I, yeah. I, that, that's something I truly enjoyed. I was like, I guess I'm a nice person. <laughs> that's yeah. what I took from playing the game. <laughs> well, it, and actually at the end of each chapter, we'll tell you like what your play style is. Like it'll yeah. evaluate it a little bit and, and kind of give you like, oh, you're kind hearted or <laughs> you tried to murder everyone as quickly as possible. Like it, it gives you like a bunch of different ideas going forward. So I love that aspect of it. But we're getting ahead of ourselves because we should probably break down what you're doing in this game, what the overall story is. And and like I said, off the top, there's no spoilers here, but you, here's like a quick kind of, you know, two minute thing of like what you're doing in this game. So first of all, just like other Quantic Dream style games, you are playing as multiple protagonists in this game. You're not just playing as one character and and you'll automatically be switched to the next character as you play through the experience. Um, but you start the game as a family who are on, on the road, um, but the car breaks down and they, they go to stay at a motel at, for the night. But at the same time, you also get the vantage point of um, some jewel thieves um, or, who are doing this heist, but the heist goes wrong. Um, so while they're fleeing the cops, they end up uh, heading to the hotel um, that the family is staying at. And they, you know, take the, the family as hostages while they negotiate with the police. And that's what you're doing for, you know, the first part of this game, uh, which I think is really interesting, first of all, because we don't really see like we see this a lot in movies, but we don't really ever see like hostage type stories in video games all that often. Like, um, it, unless of course you count, you know, die hard, the video game on ES on NES or something like that. You don't, that's really what see, I was like, going to bring up the negotiating with the terrorists and stuff in video games all that often. Well, Detroit behind really human, the very first beginning of that game. That's there's that. But beyond that, how many other games really do this type of thing? Right? Like I, it's something you see a lot in movies, but not in games, which I thought was really refreshing and cool. So, um, overall with the story itself kind of, uh, touching on different points of it. First of all, I love the, the direction the story goes in. I think it, to court's point earlier, it touches on some really heavy themes throughout its story and it's not shy to, you know, take the, the story in a direction that you were not expecting or covering some really sensitive material. It also does give you some warnings as well. So if you want to skip out on some of that stuff, you know, the game is totally, you know, flexible in that way. So, uh, and it'll usually warn you of, you know, what that content me- content is if you want to know ahead of time, uh, before, you know, you know, committing to it either way, which I think is a really good thing overall. But I think the writing is really on point with this game. I loved a lot of the characters I know, the three of us kind of feel differently about some of the characters. Um, but I really liked all the characters that you played as, but all, all the side characters as well, I thought were really interesting as well. Um, when each person had their own, felt like they had their own motivation and reason to be where they were. Um, and I just loved learning about each of the characters, but I'm going to go to Sean with this one. Sean, what did you like about this? Like, first of all, how'd you feel about the story and the writing in particular with the, the different characters? Yeah, I felt like, like you said, like some, there's some tropey stuff that happens here. There's some cliche stuff, but I, as I started to break the game down and reflect on it more, I felt like that was kind of required as a baseline for then the game to go off into its different parts and still kind of make sense. Like you, you did need to have like a hostage situation, which of course you've seen that kind of in, in movies and things. 
And just like the trailer that we saw, and, and we're, we're kind of watching here on, on the video version here as well, like things kind of ramp up in an un, unsuspecting way, especially with this 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 art style which is very lovely it's it seems unassuming and then all of a sudden it's like oh snap like what are we in for here man so i was as i started to allow myself kind of into the game it 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 grappled me a little bit more as well but um yeah i we just kept going and i i ended up actually quite liking the game in the end and this and the story i have a few thoughts on a few of the characters as way as far as like how they were performed or acted like i said some sometimes it's a little over the top a little little much um but overall this is a surprisingly good game man i don't know it's a i i really went on a journey and i'm curious court if you kind of stayed the same throughout like where you ended up with the story and the game and your impressions of it or did you go on a journey like me because i i wasn't really sure about it in the beginning so i if you remember i messaged you at one point and i was like a tiny bit annoyed mm -hmm. with one character and it was i even said to my wife i'm like i think i don't like this game yeah and she and i was like and it has everything that i like like great story because it it truly felt like a movie or or more of a like an hbo miniseries that i really wanted yeah. to watch and really get keep going and keep going but i was like i really didn't like this one choice that i was sort of forced to make and it's you have to to carry the story along and it's just because of the character but then as the story develops and I saw where the the narration was taking me, and I was like, "Oh, okay, that that makes sense. Okay, my my bad." And then I wanted to like know more about what was going on because because you you have that this it's just it got me to a place that I I'm trying not to say things, so it's just yeah. it's tough in my brain. I'm trying not to Tom Holland anything here. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm it really just took me to a place that I never expected to go and actually make me like certain characters that I didn't like before. But at the same time, I made decisions later on that I didn't think I was going to make. Yeah. So for me, when, when we talk about games that deal with like mature settings and I, Brian and I have talked about this with like games like life is strange and things where I get, I have a, a sensitive threshold to you just the writers and the story going to places like, of course it's going to tear you up. Like it's, it's designed to make you emotional. It's designed to do these things. And I'm like, that almost seems that, that to me more often than not seems too easy. It almost seems like lazy writing. So it's a very thought fine line for me to, to walk across when it comes to this kind of stuff. If you're going to deal with mature, uh, themes and, and content, then it has to be done maturely. And, and I think in, in a fair and also evolved kind of way. So when things were on the surface starting to appear kind of cliche, I'm like, damn it. Like it's so close. And so I, I, I am hovering on that in the end with this game. Like in some cases, super tropey, super stereotypical. We've seen this a million times before, kind of on the nose with some stuff. There's some family conflict in here as well that I think is going to rub people in a variety of different ways, kind of depending on your own experiences with that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it doesn't it, it's not shy to go into a variety of different, very serious topics and. Well when I went back, cause you can see the percentage of what people's choices are. I was pretty much always in the lowest percentage. That's what yeah. I, I want to go back and play it again or check back on my percentages once this game is out actually, because of course we're only being compared to everybody else who's yeah. you know, pre-release and stuff. I was always happy to be in like the lowest percentage. Like everybody else is doing something else. I'm like, I did something different. I had a different well, game experience than a lot of people. Yeah. And I and I can't, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. Um, this is the first game that brought out emotion of me, of like actual physical anger or towards characters in the game since The Last of Us. And mm. I think it has a lot to do with um, being a parent because there's a lot of um, parent choices in this game. Yeah, let's say. Yeah, definitely family choices for sure on a, on two families in particular. And before Ryan, I throw it back over to you. Like the other thing that was I was thinking about was as I was making decisions, because you get to play as so many different characters in this game, I really was putting myself into that person's shoes, but maybe with a little bit of me. Like I really wasn't making like Sean's decisions for everybody, like because I feel like everybody would do maybe everything is good or everything's bad. I really started to think about, OK, what would what would Alex Van Aken do in this scenario? <laughs> Phil Kessel. It's Phil Kessel. Come on now. <laughs> Vince looks like Alex Van Aken. Um, 
But yeah, I really said almost like a double of him. I I thought it was him at first, actually. I thought that that was one of the more rewarding experiences within the game was if you want to play that way, if you want to think as Vince and see what he would do or see what Jay would do or whoever else, like that was fun to me. Like I really and, and also on this note, I think a game that offers you this sort of agency it rests on its ability to make you struggle with the choice what am i going to do here the sometimes it'll be like one of two things and you're just the camera shaking it's really intense you're like do i confess to this thing or do i blurt this person out like what do i do and there were certain times where i really didn't know and that's the hallmark that for me is like the okay i think i'm into this Uh, Aside from anything else I can really say about it, when decisions are made to be tough like that and I really have to think hard about it, then I'm in, man. That's that's what I like about this stuff. This was the first decision based game that I decided to make the same sort of decision for each character, the opposite of what you did. So I literally was like and it's, it's funny. My daughter does this thing where she's always like she tells me, Daddy, that's not nice. Or like I ask her, I even today I talked about her ratting me out to her mom for buying or something like why do you do that? And she's like, well, you know, and she gave me her reasoning and it was almost like she was being ethical all the time. So I decided while playing this game, I almost had like a her on my shoulder. I was like, I'm going to be the most ethical choices you can make and then we'll see what happens. I can't wait to to talk spoilers with you. By the Texas, like, remember when I was like, oh, this is happening. You're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I made ethical choices for every single character until near the end where I decided I, I was going to see if I could try and make one character disappear. And I couldn't <laughs> <get it done. laughs> disappear. Yeah. yeah, man. And the, the uh, sorry, Ryan, the, the butterfly effect thing, like I had recently played Life is Strange True Colors and really it's a couple of decisions that that change it for you. There are hundreds of moments mm-hmm. there are there are tons and the way that it lays this out is very similar to those quantic dream games that we've seen like it tells you this is where paths can cross this is where a person can live or die like this is like some serious stuff here and i love the way that's laid out it is so transparent and it makes me want to play the game again ryan yeah absolutely and, and you and i actually played it very similarly sean which is why like when we get to spoilers i actually think like you and I will probably end up having more similar choices because I played this because we're monsters. Everyone knows, first of all, I love, yeah, I love seriously, role yeah, I wanted <laughs> well, to call, I called Sean a monster. I did. Well, I mean, first of all, I play a lot of role-playing games, but also I think of the three of us, I, I think I play, I'm the one who probably plays these types of games the most. Um, cause I love, cause especially cause I love horror games like the Corey recently or, you know, uh, stuff like life, life is strange. Like all of those games are totally all the rage for someone like me. So, um, I, I always, like Sean, like to think of me in the boots of that character and think like, what would Vince do in this situation? Or what would some of the other characters you control do in those situations? And and I'm trying to be that character is kind of how I felt about it. Um, so that that's why I, I, it's so interesting, too, because like even Sean and I, though, we talked about this a little bit on on messages because this is definitely like once once you get playing this game, folks, trust me, if you have friends who are playing it, too you guys are going to be talking about this game to each other. Like it's the perfect. But I almost spoiled it for Sean by an accident because I thought he was exactly where I was, but I didn't. I I think I think I I was, I think I was just behind. We were actually quite close uh, for most of this week, actually. And now that you say that, Ryan, I think that um, I'll be, I'll be curious to know, especially in the Xbox drive channel in our discord, which of course links are in the show notes to join. um, If we have some nice chitter chatter about that, we might set up a different thread on this because I want to hear from people. This could definitely yeah. be a uh, super fun Sean Capri Saturday night game where oh, you have totally. everybody in the chat. Totally. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I can see a lot of um, interaction with this game and a very good conversation, especially around some of the choices that you make. This is There's a lot of great conversations in this game and huge, huge topics, huge topics yeah. that are covered throughout this game. Absolutely. And to to your point about replaying the game, Sean, uh, one nice thing about this game is that if you do want to go back and make other choices, um, they do have your choice menu set up for each mm-hmm. of the game's episodes and you can go back to any point you want yeah. and make whatever choices you want. And that and then you can see what how that changes the story as you continue to play it from they, there. So for the trophy hunters and the achievement hunters out there, they make it easy for you to go out and get a thousand percent or get the platinum yeah. in this game. Although we can't really say that yet, Court, because we haven't we haven't even seen the achievements yet. No, so no, I understand that. But if if it has as someone that does love his achievements and trophies, um uh, I got the platinum in um in uh, Detroit Beyond Human and um so it lets you that didn't let you you had to have safe states this 
looks like you don't need save states, you can go in and actually just do it, which is thank you. Thank you for doing no that. Kidding. <laughs> yeah, because what it'll do is it'll ask you when you make a new choice, when you go back to an old choice, it'll ask you, do you want to create a new save? And mm-hmm. then progress from there yeah. um, or rather than having to make your own save back uh, backups or you can just continue from your old save and it'll just overwrite all your progress. So you, the choice is theirs it is there for you. Yes. On what you want to do. So I really love that that aspect to the replayability, because even though c- c- Sean and I were talking about this off air, but like even though I didn't replay the game, I got to see multiple aspects of the choice system because I went back and replayed a bunch of choices just to see, you know, what I could break or what I could do differently or like what ramifications it would have. Like I would, I would go back to chapter two and change something there and then see what happens, you know, towards the end of the game. Like I thought that was super cool. And I loved the, that aspect of this experience. And it was way different than something going, comparing it to something I recently played, like the Corey, for example, because there's like a chapter select in that game when you finish the game, but you can it overwrites or save. And then you can't use the chapter select, again until you beat the game again yeah, brutal. Ooh, yeah which yeah. is which just makes it so much harder re- to revisit it without just replaying the whole thing from scratch so i i love that all of the the different options that the developers put in for this you can definitely and, tell that they've made this type of game before and, and speaking of options i i know xbox wire put it out there but the accessibility features in this game are endless um they have the menu narration so for and they have the gameplay narration text to speech speech to text um Flatten choice UI, lowercase only, choice color, options background. Um, I I know I've seen many people um, championing um, in in the in the community on how many accessibility features they put into this game. So it really looks like a game that everyone can play, which yeah. is awesome, for sure. And and not only that too. And it's important for us to to note this as well. Um, at the time of this recording, there's also supposed to be an Ask Dust Falls app that's coming out that allows you to inter- interface with the game using a phone or another device that supports the app. So you don't even have to use a controller to play that way. There's also eight player multiplayer for this game. There's no matchmaking, so you can't play with random people, um, but you can play with your friends. Um, but again, that's not available to for us to try at the time that we're recording this. Um, and that's something that I think we want to try Sean, Big time. So maybe that's something we talk about on the show at some point. Yeah, so I think this this game is like set up to be that game that you can play in the cloud. Like it it, yeah. it is it is like the perfect hey get an Xbox Game Pass, grab your iPad, and just play this game while you're having breakfast. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and on PlayStation last gen, they had a few. I can't remember what they were called, but they had a couple of games where you played with friends in the same room with your phone, very similar to like a Jackbox kind of experience. And that seems to be what they're going for here. And you're right, Ryan. I, I can't wait to have that kind of experience with people so long as they're okay with some of the yeah. some of the story beats in here as well one thing that i'll just touch on before we move on here is uh, as far as like the story writing is concerned and the, the the choices that are made it is another fine line that they have to they have to balance as far as giving you some pretty critical decisions to be making and then making the consequences actually make sense i've definitely played games in the past where you go well i'm gonna turn left instead of right and you go well actually you fell off a cliff and now you're dead like there's nothing quite <laughs> like that there's still there's still uh consequences consequences that matter but it's like okay that makes sense that that happened because i did this this or this and so i i really appreciate that about the writing where yeah we've seen some of these choose your own adventure things and you're like what what is that that is not what i intended to happen i was trying i was thinking i was going to say this and then somebody comes and smacks me upside the head like what like so everything seemed to make sense but still surprise me like it's that's really really hard to do and i want to celebrate this game for that but yeah, the, the multiplayer stuff you guys are talking about is I can't wait to see how that how that works out. Yeah. And one other thing I want to touch on, which, again, obviously, we wouldn't be able to test this feature beforehand, but there is an option to play this game on Twitch and yeah. then link the game to Twitch and then have your Twitch chat make the choices for you, which I think is going to be real interesting to see some of those playthroughs. At it, some point. It's worth mentioning on that note, um, Ryan, that. I feel like you actually, I think, mentioned something to me in messages that you don't really move around in this game. It's not really like Detroit in that, like, you could walk around the environment. There's a couple of screens where you're moving your mouse or your cursor around to see, like, what's behind the TV over here and things like that. But that's kind of it. So the gameplay itself really lends itself to being controlled by people. Really, you're, you're deciding dialogue and decisions throughout. But you're not 
moving around, which I really appreciate it. Sometimes in some of these like Life is Strange games, you're just wandering and meandering. There's none of that. The, the story continues to carry along. It's chopped up into six chapters, two books, and it's all very digestible. And yeah, those are some of the kind of key mechanics that I still appreciated about the game as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we should all talk about a little bit more, actually dive more into what you were just talking about, Sean, and skip ahead a little bit and talk about the control scheme for this game, because what I, I don't think any of us coming into this knew what to expect with how this game was going to play, because we did we didn't see any stuff in the trailers of how you really interact with the game in any way. So and I think that the way that you interact with this game is interesting and it's worth talking about. So first off. As Sean mentioned, you're not walking around in this game. You don't have to worry about going to the menus and inverting your controls because there's no real reason to do so unless you want to invert the cursor, I guess. Um, because for the most part, you're pretty much playing like a mouse game on your Xbox in a way where yeah. you control a mouse cursor and you're clicking on the choices that way. Um, because the cho choices, for example, will appear on screen. You move the cursor over to, to click on them. Um, likewise, there are also quick time events that happen in this game. Um, and they're all very simplified as well, whether it's, you know, pressing a on the controller or, you know, doing a full, you know, 360 on your, your joystick or, you know, pressing in a certain direction or whatnot. And I, um, I think that has a lot to do with also the accessibility features going mm -hmm. back to like how easy they made this for everyone. It wasn't like if you don't do this so quickly, you're you're not going to get that done. Like they gave you enough time to swipe right or go up or down or you could actually even screw up. I screwed up once and then did it again. It, it didn't burn me for it. It still let my choice go. Yeah, through. there's a couple times. And even you mentioned the word swipe. That's when it kept um, alerting to me. This game is really made for many people to be playing on their phone. I think that's going to be a big push. Like it actually prompts you swipe up like I've never seen that when playing a game with a controller, it would just be like up. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting on that front, but yeah, the very forgiving, I would say too, sometimes I felt like it, you needed to like mash the A button and, and fill kind of a meter. Sometimes I felt like it was a little, a little late and it still was like check mark. I'm like, if you say so, okay. Like <laughs> it's, it's definitely forgiving on that front. This is not like a tactically advanced, uh, advanced kind of game at all. Yeah. And sometimes I kind of wish it was a little harsher on that front, but in the end, I, I did feel it was very similar actually to the, they are a making. monster. Well, here's the thing, though. Like there was, a, there were some things or some instances where I felt like, could this person, could this character perform this act that it's trying to get me to do? And in some cases, I decided, no, I don't think this character is capable of this in this moment. So I failed on purpose, actually. And so I like those are the kind of I, I jumped through the screen. I was really that was some actual role playing game. Man, you were you're a method actor, right? I was just totally you're right into the role. And I'm like, no, this guy's not grabbing that rock, dude. He's so he, Sean's new name is Daniel Day Lewis. That's right. Yeah. Give me the top hat. Yeah, exactly. From, but uh, yeah, no, I know that. Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Beyond that, the exploration <laughs> that is there, you're, sometimes you'll be presented with a, uh, you know, a flat, you know, uh, uh, screen and then you move your cursor around the room and click on different objects. Um, but what was interesting about this game and, and what I liked about this exploration element is that none of these scenes feel like they linger too long Agreed. because what ends up happening, and I don't know if you guys caught on to this, but um, in a lot of the scenes, it only allows you to interact with two objects. A lot of scenes will end up having four or five things you can click on, but it will only allow you to click on two things before it moves you along to the next story, yep. beat, which I thought was really cool. It just kept the pace going and it just didn't feel like a slog like one of the things Sean was just talking about with Life is Strange, how sometimes you hey, wander around and meander for a bit, like it kept the pace going, which I really at the, at the very near the end of the game, there's that part where you have to do that thing. And I kept screwing up because I was turning the controller the wrong way. It just let it go through no matter what. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. it didn't make a difference. Ryan, they pushed the story along. They pushed it. Talking about the pacing, they pushed it yeah. through no matter what. I think that pacing is definitely worth mentioning there. And then also, like, it's actually a, deform, a form of decision making that isn't choose left or right. It was like you have to prioritize. In some cases, you were limited on time. I think there's one scenario where, like you have a half an hour to do these things and you can choose. There's a bunch of stuff and you're like, you kind of have to choose. OK, well, is this person going to get in trouble if they're not completing all their tasks in this in this case? Or like, should they just go? veg on the couch and eat a bag of chips or something or should they actually do what has been asked to them and i thought there was almost like a very 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 minor and small kind of persona element to that like very small time management prioritization that was again 
presented almost as a just point and click, but it really was a decision making tree that if you failed, if you did the wrong things or whatever you want to call right or wrong, you might have a different outcome out of that scene. Would you be shocked that I like ace that part? Like I rock that part. I know exactly mm-hmm. what you're talking about. I definitely did not go Same look here. at it on the balcony. Same I here. didn't care yep. about that balcony. Mm-hmm. I made everything perfect. Yep. Good husband moves, man. <laughs> yep. There you go. Um, but then beyond all the control stuff and the interactivity, beyond. first of all, beyond. um, I can imagine that maybe the, some of this might, you know, rub someone the wrong way because the, maybe someone might be looking for more interactivity with their games. But I actually thought it was really I I really liked the way that this game was handled. Like at first, I thought it was weird that I was controlling the main menu of the game with like a mouse cursor on my Xbox. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I was in the game, I totally forgot about it. I was hooked like uh, I couldn't put this game down. From the second I started, dude, playing. you were done the same dumb. day you started. You were like, okay, yeah, I played in one sitting. He, I beat he in does one that city. with like I, pretty I much everything. He does that. <laughs> no, 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 not Where everything. But a, how? <laughs> but, but a lot of story based games, if I can finish them in one sitting, like I'll tend to do that. Like hey. the, the, especially like the the Dark Pictures anthology games, I do that with or. This as, game, like a, as a Rogers customer, the internet decided for me that I was not doing that. That is hilarious. I, I, I literally downloaded the game, and then. Minutes later, I turned on my Xbox and I'm like, huh? I was like, oh, I'm going to play it today. And then all of a sudden I go, on, I, I I can't go on anything. My phone is not. I'm like, what is going on? Just poop here? emojis. All your devices are just poop emojis. <laughs> Nothing is working. Nothing Seriously. Is working at all. One slight uh, critique that I have on, and I don't know if you guys found this as well, like it's very, very minor, but it did feel like there was like almost like a lag when I would move the cursor. It seemed like it was slightly behind. I don't know if you guys felt that as well, but didn't, it just seemed. Didn't feel that. Um, I hate, yeah. I, I am actually a, uh, I can't stand when games give me a mouse cursor when yeah. I have a controller. Um, I don't know why it's something that bothers me and makes me just, okay, I'm going to use a mouse. It's just like I, any game that is to me in my marine, a PC game, this is a PC game oh, or, totally. a, or a, like I said before, perfect game for an iPad or any tablet. Like it's perfect. Yeah. Like absolutely yeah. perfect. It's actually probably better on a PC or a tablet or a phone over the, over the console. I think yeah, Ryan, you actually, and I will yeah. talk about that on the, on the podcast, on the Xbox drive on our weekly show. Cause I would love to just jump back but i don't think there's any sort of like re-review yeah. that we'll have to do on that no in fact i actually tried the pc version before we recorded today um and just found it th- that everything court said was actually correct about it where i really feel like it just plays a lot more smoother with a mm-hmm. with a mouse and keyboard than i think it does with a controller and but play anywhere by the, the way you can go back and forth if you're playing on your xbox and you have it installed on a pc you can jump back and forth your cloud saves carry over is like not an issue at all very cool and bringing that up too, I actually think this might be like a good candidate for like a cloud game if you want to yeah. try cloud streaming because the install is actually pretty big on Series X. I think it's like 50 gigs. Um, yeah, just if you want to save on some space like, and you've got a good internet connection, I would try doing the cloud streaming because I actually think they might actually work really well on your phone or your tablet. I'm, I I'm, I'm very curious to start trying to use it on my tablet for the next couple of days and see how well it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Beyond this, the one other thing I wanted to talk about, we talked about this a little bit, but I want to circle back to it, is the visual style for this game, because I because this is one of the most striking things about this game. It's a lot of people from what I've seen, as far as, you know, people commenting after seeing the trailer, especially when when we were in the room at, uh, you know, Xbox's uh, conference this year, a lot I felt like a lot of people were very split down the middle on the art style with this game where some people either really, either really loved it or hated it. But I think judging from what we've been talking about here, I think we, we consensually kind of agree that we all really like that the artistic style. Sean, um, I, you were the only one who didn't mention anything about it. Did you also feel the same way that court and I did about the, the visual style of this game, the way that it felt like a choose your own adventure book. And then the visuals actually lent itself to a book and the flipping of pages I thought was like, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but I feel like those two things kind of go hand in hand. Um, I don't think that the visual style is is a disservice to the game. That's about as middling as I can get on it. But I I'm just glad that we have something that looks different. This doesn't look like Fortnite. This doesn't look like really anything at all. So I'm almost at the point where like it could look like anything as long as it's different and I'm going to be happy about it. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. But at a more creative standpoint, I am glad that it seems to fit with what the game play is like, that it's flipping pages and and 
and that kind of works. They, I will say there's some poses that people will make if I'm getting very specific. There's like some faces yep. because it's not really animated. They'll they'll show a face for a number of seconds and they just kind of like some of them are a little weird. Some of them are a little awkward. They kind of have like the, this the, stunned the look. Zoe many many times as as the daughter yeah yeah many many times when she's it's almost like she's happy when something really sad is happening i'm like well, why are you smiling yeah it's like it's like if you were to take a picture of us or a screenshot mid talking but they drew them like that and that's that's an interesting choice because they easily could have made every pose very just posed like actually like they're either happy or they're sad but sometimes they would they would draw them they were it looks like it's kind of illustrated as if they're you're you're freezing them in the middle of saying a word and sometimes that can be a little awkward yeah i found that only with the daughter like way too many times i'm like jesus so weird <laughs> and only when she only at the in the in the beginning of the game yeah um and one thing i wanted to say about the stop motion as well because i know again a lot of people voice their concerns about it but you know, five minutes into the game, I wasn't even thinking about it. You know, my brain, what's interesting about in from uh, animation like this, where you don't have all of the frames of animation to, to see like the full fluid movement of someone moving in a straight line, your brain kind of fills in the rest of the information, missing information in your head. So when, and I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but when I, no. you know, think back to my memories of playing this game, it almost like in my brain, it plays back as if they're fully animated because that's how my brain interprets mm, the footage. Wow. Honestly, um, I would love a day in Ryan's brain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Psychonauts into, into Ryan Turfer's uh, head. Seriously, because you probably it, don't want to go. My brain forgets everything. And it definitely it, it, like I said, it was it was jarring at first. I it, like straight up was annoying me. Um, and then I was like, I got it, it almost became. I got used to it and then I was like, I actually started liking it. It was like one of those things where it's like a, it's like a Nickelback song. When you first hear it, you're like, oh my God. And then after a while, you just, you just like it. It's just, it is what it is. You gotta stop hating it. Yeah, big time. I feel like hmm, some of the character designs were a little bit strange on this front. And maybe the point that I'm dancing around here though, and as we kind of talk about the visual style, actually kind of, you almost have to talk about the voice acting at the exact same time because, because it's not fully animated or anything. It really does lean on the voice performances here. And this is where I was like, I was hyper focused on the performances because there wasn't really too much happening on screen. And so I wasn't sure about some of these. I'd like, I don't know that I would really say to you guys, wow, the performance of like this character just like completely blew me away. It was more about like the circumstances that we found ourselves in with these and the, and the, the, and the story beats and the decision making. But I honestly don't know that I could tell you any one of these characters are like, wow, they really, they really crushed it. Maybe the mom on the other side. That might be I, it. As I, I thought, I, I thought Zoe on the other side. Oh not, yeah, not yeah, maybe. The, I thought maybe. The, near at near the end of the yeah. game, I thought a very, very, very good job. Um, and I really liked Vince, but I think it was just because I really liked Phil Kessel and I was really getting into his character. Um, but I you did you really think liked Alex Van Aken is what you wanted. It's Phil Kessel for me. Just, 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 just let me have this one. Um, <laughs> but uh, half the people are like, "Who's was... Alex Van Aken and Phil Kessel?" <laughs> Exactly. Who are these people? <laughs> um, Follow Alex Van Aken on Twitter at Alex Van Aken. I there was a character and it was a main character, and I I had a pro. I yeah. I the voice didn't fit the person, and I, I straight up tried to kill him, and I couldn't. <laughs> and I, I and it was because it was just it wasn't vibing with me. It just it, it felt whiny, and it just. No offense. I feel so bad saying things like this. I just, I, I wasn't a fan of the voice acting for a main character in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Which just hurt a little bit, but for the most part, I, I mean, none of the voices really bothered me, but I can, I can definitely understand where you're coming from court. And we'll talk about that more in spoilers when we do our spoiler cast, but enough about all this stuff. Cause I think it's time for us to wrap up this conversation, kind of give our final thoughts and just our overall, you know, recommend kind of not recommend on this thing. So first off, I'm going to start and then I'll go to court next. Do we think, first of all, that we recommend this game? Did we enjoy it? What were our overall thoughts? And then also the game is 40 Canadian dollars. Do you think that it would still be worth checking out even if you don't have a game pass? Because I love to ask that question because we have people write in all the time to the show who don't have game pass, but they're in the Xbox ecosystem. Um, so we definitely know that there are people out there who might be interested in this game, but want to know, you know, if they should be picking it up right away or, or kind of waiting on this one. So personally with this game, 
I really, really enjoyed this game. As I mentioned earlier, I couldn't put it down from the, the second I started playing it. And then after I was done, I went back and made some more choices and just kept playing it. And I've put maybe about 15 hours into this game since then. And I love this game. I actually think As Dust Falls is one of my favorite games that I've played this year. And that says a lot. Um, it's up there with the, with something like the Quarry or Tiny Tina um, or Elden Ring is some of my favorite games I've played this year. And I had a lot of fun with this game. I really enjoyed it. I, I'm so excited to even go back to it and revisit it again to try some of the multiplayer stuff that we talked about earlier. Um, but I really enjoyed this game. So first of all, if you have Game Pass, I think this is a no brainer if you like action, uh, sorry, adventure games or um, games with, you know, deep narratives or point and click adventures. Like I think you're really going to dig this game. Um, and, and even if the, the visuals put you off a little bit, I still think it's worth giving it a chance to. Um, and as far as, you know, the, 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 the price tag of 40 bucks, again, that's like similar to what we have for, for other narrative based adventure games. And it's cheaper than something like life is strange, true colors. And I think it's absolutely worth it for, you know, the day one price. If you you're thinking of picking it up day one, but Court, I'm going to move on to you overall thoughts. What do you think for 30 Canadian? It's 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 definitely a, a must buy, um, especially because it's a lot different than everything we're playing. There's no shoot 'em ups. There's no. It's not. As Sean mentioned it earlier. It's not the Fortnites. It's no battle royale. It is literally a. I love movies and I love going to the theater. It was the first time I sat down and played a game in a long time since The Last of Us that I had feelings towards characters. I had feelings towards the game itself and felt those feelings like frustration, like actual put the controller down for a second. And I was mad at a character. Like I, I had many thoughts playing Psychonauts too, because of the, the message that it was talking about, but last of us had me had feelings. This game had made me had feelings and it, it, it definitely is definitely worth the money. If it's a $70 game, I'd probably say no. Um, that's just, way I'm going to I'm going to put my barometer on it but as a game pass game I would say this this is one of those games where you're like see this is game pass can come out and come out of nowhere with one of these type of games because this yeah. game is great it's great yeah. yeah I mean it's a slam dunk I think for game pass in particular but Sean let's hear from you what do you think so on my end like I don't know <laughs> so i think this is like if you don't have game pass get a month and play this game like that that is at bare minimum like that's amazing and i, t I think it makes a case for that if you're going to enter into game pass and get it for this um i think to buy the game i think is also worth it as well i'm struggling i guess a little bit on, on like the word that you guys are dropping here which is great and i can't decide if it's great because i do have a couple it's not of like excellent it's great there's a difference uh and it, is it gr grood like is it's it, not good it's not good it's so, definitely like, better for, than good for so, me mm -hmm. good is like halo infinite halo infinite was good yeah uh, sure forza was great <laughs> Well, yeah, I know we. I know we all disagreed on well, that that's one why, too like, at the time. Well, it's my but turn. This is why I'm saying, like, like I don't. I, I'm I'm, I have. I have that's a couple. What I mean. of, Everyone's got their own scale to work with, right? It's, but but my thing is like. I walk away from it and I think about, I th and I'm thinking about it. So I'm like, that should tell me that it's really good. And I think that's really where I land on it is that it is really good. I, I think back to some of the decisions that were made. I'm like, that's really good. But there's something, there's something about them. Like, I don't know if I can go like absolutely amazing, best thing ever. And that's such a stupid thing about gaming and commentary about gaming is that like sometimes when people hear it's not the best thing ever, that it's not worth your time. It's absolutely worth your time. I think you're going to have one of the more unique experiences. Like I think I, I focus more on those types of things. You're going to have fun with friends. You can like show somebody who doesn't even play games that you can have different experiences like this. Those are all really interesting things about this game and deserve people's time and attention to it. But when I think of, and maybe it's just the fact that it's a somewhat choose your own adventure and not like this really intricate kind of thing that might be a me brain breaking kind of thing where I can't go, you know, get in it for the systems and get in it for like how complex and all this stuff. So the, the, what, but what it is, is a really interesting experience. It knows what it is. It has a tremendous amount of replay value and it leverages itself to be replayed over and over and over again and to have great conversations. So I, that's a whole lot of rambling to say that I'm very positive about it, but I struggle with like a 
five stars, like five out of five kind of yeah. thing. So that's kind of, well, that's that why we sense. don't do ratings on this show. Totally. Like we just, we, this game, especially, I think is a great example of why maybe ratings are really, really tricky because it depends mm-hmm. on the decisions that you make and how you feel about those and everything else. Like I said, I, I also yeah. wanted to add um, that I think if this game wasn't on next gen, I would have a lot of problems with this because loading screens on this game, I think would detract from this game. Huge. I'm so glad and, that you said that. Some and the games fact in the that there's past, no loading screen, they just have that little symbol in the corner and I see that it's loading, but it's instant. It's instantaneous. There's, you don't even realize that it's loading. And I think that a game like this, if it put a loading screen and I had to wait a minute, it would take me out of the immersion. Even from the moment that you make a decision, like in, in the past, we've seen games like this. Heavy Rain is a good example of this all the way back on PS3, where you make a decision, then it's like, okay, chugging 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 and then it's going to show you what is actually happening but you make a decision you're going to go left the car goes left and all the consequences that come along with that happen the telltale games definitely you would make a decision and things would slow down and it's like which screen am i supposed to show you next oh, okay now we're here this was totally totally seamless so i'm so glad you brought that up court yeah and especially too because you don't really have any gameplay that gets in the way of it too which just right. really helps the pacing mm-hmm. of this game so Absolutely. So either way, from the three of us, I think we all recommend it. I think it's awesome. You should definitely check it out, whether you got Game Pass or you don't. I think it's a game that is definitely worth picking up. But that's all for this conversation about As Dust Balls. But before we go, Sean Plugs, go. Oh, you can find me on Twitter and on Twitch at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery and Capri like the pants, my friend. Yeah. And Court, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Court Lalonde or at our Carpool Gaming because um, I, I am both. That's true. The, the, that's who you are that, that's where you can find me honestly because all my links are there and i don't have a a cute little like capri like the pan i gotta figure out something like that that's 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 too good you gotta find something whereas as for me you can find me on twitter at ryan turford you can find us on twitter at carpool gaming on youtube at youtube.com slash carpool gaming on podcast services around the globe and also huge thank you once again to our friends at xbox canada for you know sending us codes for the game and for letting us check it out a little bit early so for Court Lavon and Sean Capri, I'm Ryan Tuffer. This has been an extra mile all about as dust falls, and we're out.